Hey, I'm back. Colin Weaver, IT Dojo, CISSP Questions of the Day, helping you get ready for the CISSP exam. All for the low, low price of love. Here comes question number one. Which of the following long list are characteristics of a MAC address, Media Access Control address? I want you to pick five. One, two, three, four, five, five. Go, find them. All right, first one I hope you found in some kind of super freak mode Where's Waldo kind of thing is that MAC addresses are 48 bits in length. MAC addresses are also expressed in hexadecimal. All MAC addresses contain a, well, all 48-bit MAC addresses contain a 24-bit OUI, which is actually the first 24 bits or the first six hexadecimal characters of a MAC address are the organizationally unique identifier. They identify the manufacturer of the actual adapter, of the actual interface, uh, which in some cases can be very helpful. All right, another thing that is true of MAC addresses is that MAC addresses are actually used by multiple different 802 standards. Um, 802.3, which is good old-fashioned everyday Ethernet that most of us know and love. I would hope to say all of us, but I'll stick with most of us. Um, certainly makes use of MAC addresses, good old-fashioned copper cable kind of Ethernet stuff. Uh, 802.11, wireless LAN, makes use of MAC addresses. Bluetooth makes use of MAC addresses, and there's a few other ones that aren't coming to mind to me right now, but those are certainly three big ones that are out there in the world that you encounter on a daily basis that, that make use of MAC addresses for communication. And the last answer choice that you're looking for on here to make all five of them correct is that MAC addresses have to be locally unique. Now, on paper, a MAC address has the potential to be globally unique. However, that's not guaranteed. But from a local uniqueness perspective, it is important that every single node on a network segment is a locally unique MAC address. So all the PCs and the servers that are part of your you know, local VLAN, and it is VLAN specific or individual local network specific, they need to be unique. Now you can have two different nodes, three routers apart that have the exact same MAC address. If for some bizarre reason that was gonna happen, that's not gonna cause you a problem. But if you have two nodes on the same segment, um, that have the same MAC address, that is going to cause you some issues. All right, let's put that monstrosity of a question behind us and move on to the next one. By what mechanism does an IP version 6 node resolve an IP address to a MAC address? There's your choices. Click on pause. Click play when you're ready. Talk about the answer. All right, first answer choice, wrong. Using the address resolution protocol, no. ARP does not exist in IP version 6. We kick that kid to the curb. ARP is a bolt-on protocol to support the use of IP version 4 in an Ethernet network and has been the bane of our existence since shortly after it came out because it has no capacity to really be secured in a way that's practical or useful that people every day make use of. So. We don't use ARP in IPv6 anymore. We have something else, and that's what we're searching for here in the answer. All right, how about using MDNS for local name resolution? Uh, no, MDNS is multicast DNS. MDNS effectively releases, uh, particularly for Microsoft nodes, it replaces what a lot of Microsoft nodes got through NetBIOS, was the ability to find resources on a local network segment and the services that they offer, except NetBi NetBIOS is an antique, uh, and multicast DNS is a great way for you to be able to go in and locate nodes on a network and find services that are offered on your local network segment. And you get to do it without having a DNS server because it is a multicast. So that's all well and good, but it's not the answer to this question. You can't resolve a MAC address using multicast DNS. All right, how about using the solicited node multicast address? That's the right answer. In IP version six, we, do, we send a solicitation, a neighbor solicitation, to a particular address called the solicited node multicast address when you are trying to resolve the MAC address of a particular destination IP version 6 address. The beautiful part about this is that it's an ICMP multicast 
And the actual destination address, which is this solicited node multicast address, is a fixed 104-bit value and then has the low order 24 bits of the IP version 6 address that you're looking at concatenated with that 104 bits. In most circumstances, this is not a guarantee, but in most circumstances, that's actually going to produce a unique multicast address. Which means, unlike ARP and IP version 4, when you send out a broadcast and everybody gets the ARP and IP version 4, when you send out a solicitation for a particular node to learn its MAC address in IP version 6, there is a high degree of likelihood that only that node is going to receive the solicitation, which makes your network more efficient and in a super itty bitty itty super teeny, like, like that much, can you see that much? That much more secure. No, a little bit less, right there. That much more secure. So, uh, but it is definitely much more efficient. Um, I won't go into other benefits of it, but there's more. But another day. Now, we know the right answer, but hey, let's keep going to make sure we know why the other ones are not the answer. How about using SLAC, S-L-A-A-C, which is a very long, when you expand it out, acronym. It stands for Stateless Address Auto Configuration. Slack is the mechanism by which IP version 6 nodes can automatically configure themselves. All they need to know is the network prefix and they can just sort of autom automatically configure their own IP address. We'll talk more about Slack in some other questions some other day. Uh, right now we're just trying to figure out how we resolve uh, IP addresses to MAC addresses. Next answer choice says, hey, you could send it to FF02 colon colon 1, which is the, the all nodes multicast on a local network segment. That is as close as you're going to get to a broadcast in IP version 6 because broadcasts technically don't exist anymore in IP version 6. Now we have this all nodes multicast address. That's all well and good, except it's not the address that we use in order to go in and resolve IP addresses to MAC addresses. So we are not soliciting every node on the network. We are soliciting a particular node. And this is one of the improvements in the efficiency of the utilization of the protocol um, in IP version 6 compared to IP version 4. We don't just scream out into the network, hey, who's got this? You know, whoever has this IP address, I need your MAC address. No, we try and more elegantly deliver it to that particular node using the solicited node multicast address. And then the final choice on here, I just put in to mess with you saying IP version 6 does not use MAC addresses. Uh, yeah, it does. Because you know how many changes we made to Ethernet for the rollout of IP version 6? I'll give you a hint. It was either this many or this many. Okay, Ethernet is Ethernet is Ethernet is Ethernet. The fact that it's carrying IP version 6 doesn't really matter. Okay, um, IP version 4 and IP version 6, it's all Ethernet at layer 2, baby. Okay, down to layer 1, off it goes. So none of that stuff really changed. Done. Two more questions. Hope you're getting ready. See, ISSP exam's coming soon. I'll be back tomorrow with more questions. Bye. <laughs>